reviewers and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys have been well. This is part three of the BMW S1000XR series. And in this one, we're gonna be going through the main system, its features and functions and how it all operates. So hope you enjoy and let's go. One of the first things you'll be greeted with when you switch on the XR is that beautiful screen. So it comes up with the main tachometer on there. You've got speed at the top in miles per hour. You can change that to kilometers per hour if you want to as well. You've got on there the outside temperature, gear selector just on the bottom right there, main tachometer in your red line. Up the top here, you've got which mode you're in, whether that's in rain, road, dynamic or dynamic pro. And at the very top here, this can be selectable from the scroll wheel here and the menu system. So you can change what you want to have at the top. If I just push up on this menu system here, what you'll see is it will change so we've got the fuel gauge now in bars as opposed to range. Go up again, you've got your total mileage. Then we've got the trip. Average miles per gallon. Can't say mine's going to be excellent on my bike, but you can definitely get 45, 50 quite easily if you're not pinning it often. Um, average speed, 41, obviously. And then tire pressure monitoring now. When we've got the bike on it's been rolling that's where you can see some of those features but for now i'm just going to put it back to the main system okay one thing you can do because i have shown you on a few rides now is you can put the screen into its alternative mode so let's do that bit now so by using the menu button just down here i can select by pressing down because i've got it already set up it will go into the sport dials so sport dials, as you've seen on some other videos, especially the review one and the night ride, on the left hand side you've got your traction control, DTC, on the right hand side you've got your braking ferocity. I've never seen it go above eight and I've had to stop quickly a few times. Uh, middle you've got your tachometer which is more of a race style, I uh, really like this one if you're going out on enthusiastic rides. You still get ambient temperature at the bottom left there um, and on the right you've got your time. Uh, phone signal and all the rest of it and battery um, at the bottom there you've got quite an interesting feature you've got your lean angle gauge which is for left and right and that's for uh, how far you're leaning over basically uh, what degrees you're leaning over now admittedly uh, it's an interesting feature to have but sometimes you can get caught up in the game of how far ever can I go <laughs> so just with a bit of caution on that side of it but let's scroll up into the main menu then. So again, as I mentioned, you control everything from this scroll wheel here, okay? Um, once you're in the menu, to go back and forth on this menu here, you're gonna tilt it left or right. And by doing that, you can see the menu switching. So let's go into my vehicle first. So when you bring up the my vehicle screen, uh, at the top, you can drive it like this. You can ride the bike. Um, at the top, you've still got your speed mode that you're driving in etc etc it'll even tell you if you've got your phone connected what the speed limit is for that road which is fantastic uh, gear indicator in the top right but what you'll see then on this deeper dive we've got the vehicle shape doesn't match the color but we've got engine check okay you've got oil temperature on the left hand side just here then you've got tire pressure warning alerts and the tire pressures down here which would come on if the bike was on and rolling um, on the right hand side we've got remaining fuel we've got voltage for the battery so all those things at a glance are quite great to have really, they're a useful feature and you can have that, you can have access to it at any point you want to. At the top here you've got these little, little sections, little bars here, so we're in bar one of five. So I'm just going to scroll along, so again I've just pressed that to go back and forth through it. The next one it brings up is a trip computer, okay, so we've got the journey, last journey, so Aaron 59, um, the brake, so when you want to set that for as well, um, we've got the current trip, total mileage, the range for fuel on the right hand side, average speed and average fuel consumption. So that's the onboard computer. The next one along is main trip computer. So you can have that independent of the first one if you want to. So you might want to have two different ones going. You might want to have a total or for an independent trip. So that can be quite useful for that. Fourth one along. Now my bike's got the optional tire pressure monitoring system. Now what you'll find is at the top here you can have the actual setting at the bottom you've got what the manufacturer says it should be set at and in the middle here it's going to tell you any discrepancies now i know because of the ambient temperature changing it's got a bit warmer recently my front tire for example might say 2.6 
uh, so it might say plus one on this little spec here so you can change if you want to but to be fair by the time i started the bike up it was already on 2.5 so i'm not going to change it for that discrepancy moving along then this is your fifth menu on here you've got your service requirements now my bike's only a baby uh, she's had the first service which is the break-in one and we unlocked dynamic pro so i've got until september of 2021 or 5,638 miles until I need the next service. Okay, coming back up to the main menu then. So the sport dials we've seen, if we go into navigation, I just push down on there. This is where you can set your active route guidance. Now you compare it to the BMW My Connected or Motorhead application, and that works for Apple or Android devices. So on a vehicle, you can have turn by turn navigation set up and you can set your destination on your smartphone before you even leave. So if we wanna go into it, we can see things like petrol station. That's always quite useful. If we go into that one, there we go. So you can see exactly where it is. Now I wanna go into one of those. Again, I'm just gonna select it. And there we are, we've got navigation running. So you could either have done that through your phone, but having your phone connected to the vehicle and then being able to do these things on the fly, I think is super useful. You can set your favorites there as well. That's also quite useful. You might want to have your home in there or another location work, for example, and you can just select it and away you go. Now, something else you can do, but I don't have the helmet technology to do this right now so you can have uh, wireless access to music and microphone through this system here so you can quite literally pay your devices up and have music playing as well up to you whether you want to do that when you're riding a bike I mean I prefer the bike soundtrack to be honest with you but it's a useful feature to have and then lastly telephone again so through those headsets you can have a proper comms unit attached to it and set up um, I can have my phone you know, in my pocket if I had Bluetooth device for my ears. Obviously, yeah, you can have it connected and take calls as well. Uh, again, up to you whether you want to do it, but if you're an instructor or professional, you might want to have these things set up, so it is good to know. Right, settings then, this is where it gets a bit deeper. So you've got quite a lot on the main screen. You've got your connections, display, obviously you can reset things. But if we go into vehicle settings first, so the top one is RDC. This is gonna be the tire pressure warning. So I've got it set to on. Um, hopefully I'll never get to use it, but it's good to have there. Next one down, we've got lighting. So I've got auto daytime lights selected. You can switch it to off just by touching across on the, on the wheel there, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna leave that as it is. HSC Pro, so this is gonna be for your shifting. Now, I've got my shift light on and I've got it set to 11,000 RPM, but you can go into it and configure this independently as well. So you can have it to your taste. Personally, I don't wanna take the bike into the red line much more than I need to. So uh, I've got it set for 11 just in case, but to be fair, it's more than enough to shift, you know, at 11 or before. 11,000, remember, is where this bike makes its peak horsepower, which is 165 and the torque is at 9,000 RPM, which is 114 Newton meters. You can change your brightness and screen frequency if you need to as well. Right, pro riding mode. Now, I'm not gonna select it as off because I've got mine on. So in the top right there, you can see Dynamic Pro. So this is where it gets a bit deeper. Now you can independently change all of the settings, all the key settings on the bike, shall I say. So if we go into engine first, now using the scroll wheel here, this is where we can change up and down. So if I change it to the top one, just to show you that first, that basically matches a rain mode. So you've got soft throttle response, reduced torque in low gears. Now bearing in mind this bike just over here can be controlled and you can put it into a rain mode anyway. I don't see why you would have that, but if you want to, yes, you can set it. Um, engine response there, so you can set it to level three. That's soft throttle, but maximum torque. Level two matches the dynamic mode, so the normal dynamic mode. So if you switch from road to dynamic, so you've got optimal throttle response and reduced torque in the lower gears. So up to you really, if you're gonna go into dynamic mode, that's gonna be sportier. I don't know, do you want it to be a step down in this particular mode as in dynamic pro? I would say probably not because you can select dynamic on its own just from here. So the way I set mine, so the asset mine is level one. So that way you've got optimum throttle response and maximum torque. So if you're gonna put it into the pro mode and you want to really enjoy it, that's the one that I would probably recommend. But the beauty of it is, it is configurable so you can set it to your tastes. 
So if we back out then, the next thing down is the engine braking. Now this is going to be a similar trait as you can see. If I select it all the way around to the top, level three of three is going to match the road mode on here. So you've got maximum braking effect from the engine. So when you let off the throttle, that's how much the engine is going to assist you with slowing down effectively. So again, because you've got an independent road mode on here, up to you whether you'd want to configure this in Dynamic Pro. I would say not really, but just for the purpose of the demonstrations, let's go through it. Level two matches the dynamic mode. And then level one is minimal braking effect from the engine. So because I want it in the pro mode, I want it to be a little bit different from road in dynamic. I've got mine set to one. Right, next one here, traction. Now, entirely up to you on this one. Um, on any of the modes, I've got to be completely honest with you, I have never ever seen traction control come on. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, to be honest with you. I'm assuming it's a good thing, um, but you can, again, configure your levels. So you've got four to choose from here. Level four matches the rain mode, so you've got maximum stability, but also maximum interference if it does come in. Level three matches the road mode that you can have. Level two, you guessed it, it's dynamic. So you've got the performance there, minimal interaction from the trans control system, minimal interference. And level one is maximum performance. Now, as I say, I've never ever seen this come in. I've driven the bike in the rain, I've driven it hard, I've not had to worry about anything ever coming into it. So yeah, up to you. Again, for Dynamic Pro, I set mine to level one. Right, next one down. This is quite an interesting one because there are some newer bikes, 2021 bikes, where their wheelie control or anti-wheelie system, some of them cannot be turned off. So I quite like the fact that BMW haven't jumped on that bandwagon just yet, and you can configure this. So you've got three levels to choose from. Level three, the top one, matches the road mode. So you've got maximum stability. It will barely come off the ground at all. Um, Again, up to you what you want to have on that one. Level two matches the dynamic setting. Remember, you've got an independent one, so if you want to set that in pro, that's up to you. So slight wheelie possible, optimal drive. Now, when it says slight wheelie, I would say it'll probably come off the ground, I don't know, 10 centimeters, maybe more. So it'll kind of float in the air a little bit before it will go back down. Um, I actually do keep it in this one because when you've got the vehicle in dynamic mode, the torque lower down, as you've seen when it's configured, is quite different so it does come in a bit earlier and i can assure you the front is not shy of coming up on this bike so i actually do set mine in level two on this one you can go to the next level down high wheelie possible minimal support now um again high wheelie it's up to you i mean on a bike like this um whether you want to do high wheelies or not um cuban rider if you want to see a guy doing wheelies on an s1000 xr he is like a master at it so <laughs> check out that channel but for me doing wheelies on the bike i'm not really interested but level one you can have a high wheelie if you want to yeah of course the bike's going to do it no problem at all um if you turn it off completely you're going to have no support so um you've just got to bear that in mind really uh whether you need it or not entirely up to you I just want to add actually because this is the only setting on the bike where you can actually go one more level down and you can completely turn it off so you can't completely turn off traction control on this bike i'd imagine you can if you have like a brand tuning or a custom map done but as standard that's not possible but the wheelie control yes you can turn that off completely right next one down is your abs now this is where it's quite interesting because you can actually set this front to rear independently or how it distributes it throughout the bike now i'm not going to mess with it too much i'm just going to show you how it works effectively so if we go to the top level this is going to match your rain mode so where you've got these boxes on the right here you've got different levels that sets everything front to rear distribution anti-rear lift and the abs pro all of it to absolute max uh, if we go down a level that's going to match the road mode so you can see the top three there they're all set to max but the anti-rear wheel lift and abs pro is set to medium go down again that's going to match the dynamic mode that you can have on here so the top two front and rear abs is set to medium distribution to the rear is also set to medium now the anti-rear lift then is set to minimal and abs pro is set to minimal as well next one down which is what i had it on so you've got minimal intervention from abs front and rear and the distribution of it 
and the anti-rear lift and ABS Pro is actually completely off. Now, I prefer it in this mode because much like I'm assuming a lot of you that watch these videos, we've grown up in a world where the bikes that we had originally didn't even have electronic fuel injection, let alone all of the braking systems and gadgets and gizmos that we have now. So I prefer personally to get to know the braking system on the bike as opposed to having the electronics teach me how to ride it, if that makes any sense, or to assist you too much. So I've got minimal intervention. It's really only there if I absolutely need it and I can't control the braking myself. Um, level one here, I'm not really sure what the point of it is, perhaps more for track days there. Uh, and the reason being, it still has minimal intervention on the front there, but the rear is completely switched off. So if you're gonna be kind of trail braking or a bit of correction, either leading into or even perhaps mid corner, then the rear is completely switched off. I'm gonna put it back to two. Um, like I mentioned from the wheelie though, you can't turn it off completely, okay? So level one is the lowest that you can go. Level two is what I have it on, and I'm gonna leave it set at that one. And the next operation that you can do there really is just to reset everything. So if you have gone in there and you've made a few changes, you've got a bit confused and you're kind of panicking yourself a little bit, don't worry. You can literally just reset it. It will change everything back to the standard of Dynamic Pro, if you like, and you can just customize everything that you want again. So it really is no big deal though. You're only ever gonna be a selection away from getting it just how you want. Okay guys, so that covers the main system then. So I just wanna run through the controls one more time, especially for the people that haven't seen the main review, which can be seen at the pop out, which I'm gonna do now. And there's also a night riding section. So if you've not seen that one, then do check it out because that's where I'm gonna demonstrate how the lighting controls work, but also how these bad boys come into play as well. But just to give you a walk around then. So these are the main controls. So this is the scroll wheel from the front. These are gonna be your high beams and flash or overtake for those who remember it in that way. So you can just push it forward like so. Put it back as a trigger and that's gonna be your flash. You can probably even see that just about on there as well. Okay, these are your daytime running lights. So you can set them to on or automatic or off. Um, I just have mine in the automatic mode because I don't wanna mess with it. Literally can't think of anything that I would need to do that for. This is gonna be a cruise control. So you have a trigger safety, if you like, which is this. You slide it to the right there. That unlocks this here, this switch. So you can push down to set it. You can tap forward or back and it will change the speed in one mile an hour increments as well. If you needed to brake, because sometimes in this country it gets a bit crowded and you wanna resume quickly, push back and it will go back to the speed that you set last. Obviously your hazard lights here as well. Menu system up and down. Now, because this is the TE variant, I can change uh, my suspension. I've got suspension pro setting, if you like. Now, when you push this here on the screen there, you can see dynamic or auto. So I've got mine set manually to dynamic effectively. You can also turn the system completely off by holding this, but I have it set independently now. The reason you might want this, just to go into a bit more detail, I remember you said you can change the modes and that does affect the DSA, the dynamic suspension system on this bike, because it is electronic, as you can see just down here. Um, but the reason you might want to change it yourself, and the reason the T is quite interesting in that, is because you can have the engine set to a dynamic mode, which sharpens up the throttle response, gear shifting, the way the bike behaves. But if you don't want the suspension to be all stiffened up, you can independently change it to a road setting over here, but still have the sharpness of the throttle. So that's quite a nice feature to have. Um, down here, this is the auxiliary lighting system that I mentioned, and it's also shown in the lighting video, which you can see just here on the pop-out. There's your indicators and there's your horn. Not so much to see on this side here. Um, if you'd gone for the BMW SOS or emergency call package, that's gonna be located just here. But effectively, you've got your throttle, heated grips, which you get as standard on the TE version. This is your mode selector. And remember, this is gonna change between rain, road, and dynamic. You can put it into Dynamic Pro from here as well once you've unlocked it. And then you can customize Dynamic Pro from your settings I've just shown you. Okay guys, that brings us to the end of our demonstration of the systems and the deep dive for the 2021 BMW S1000XR. I hope you've enjoyed it and do let me know if you've got any questions in the comment section below and appreciate a thumbs up if you did like it as well. 
I'm working hard to bring you some more content as well. So if there's anything you'd like to see more of, do let me know, but I've got a ton of car and bike videos coming. If you haven't already seen the full review of this bike, there's gonna be a pop out at the end so you can click on it. And remember there is a night section as well, a separate video covering the night ride and those features. And that brings us to the end of the video guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you on the next one.